Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and I want to talk to you about a program I've been working on for a while called D2R Launch. Um, some of you may have already used this in the past or be familiar with it, uh, but it has continued to improve over time uh, with extra capabilities and additional mod support. Um, so I just wanted to basically showcase uh, some of the features, talk about it. Um, I think it'll be a valuable asset for a lot of players and mod authors alike. Um, so with that said, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe, do all the usual stuff. Uh, make sure you check out the video description below to for important links to our website, Discord, Patreon, and the tool itself. Uh, with all that uh, out of the way, let's roll right into how to use the program. Um, so the first thing you'll do is uh, inside that zip download, you should see a single folder called D2R Launch. Go ahead and drag that folder wherever you'd like, and then inside you'll find three additional folders. Uh, each of these is for uh, a different program that makes up kind of the core package of D2R Launch, but you got the launcher itself, a stasher, uh, which we also call the vault. There'll be a separate video on that later. Um, and then an updater program. Uh, this just basically updates the programs themselves so you don't have to constantly uh, update everything. Um, with that out of the way, all you're gonna do is head into the launcher folder and run d2rlaunch.exe. Um, obviously, if you wanna pin this to your taskbar, create a shortcut, that kind of stuff, feel free. Um, with uh, that run, you should see a window just like this. If, however, you get an error message about .NET runtime, then we can just uh, hop over to the .NET Microsoft website. I'll be sure to go ahead and post the link to this in the video description below. Uh, but we just want to go ahead and download and install the .NET desktop runtime 6.0 or later. Um, so it shouldn't matter uh, the specific version too much. Uh, just make sure it's the desktop runtime for .NET. Uh, once you go ahead and install that, um, you can relaunch the program and you should be back with the rest of us looking at something like this. So the first thing to uh, say about D2R Launch is it acts much like a mod manager, uh, a mod customizer, as well as a downloader, installer, that kind of thing. Um, so it's very versatile. Um, so I'll try to go over uh, you know, some of this quickly, but there is kind of a lot to it if you want to fully appreciate um, you know, all its uses. Um, so the first thing to just get out of the way is uh, we got this mod choice dropdown. Um, so from here, you can select the different mods you want to play, obviously select the module like hit the play button and you're good to go um, how this works is it scans your diablo 2 mods folder uh, and basically adds everything it finds to the list uh, so once more this is kind of that mod manager aspect uh, just give you one easy access place to kind of do everything um, if the mod author has opted into it uh, which only requires editing a single file by the way um, then you also have access to the self-updating feature of D2R Launch, uh, which would allow um, you to click this Check for Mod Updates button, and if there's a newer version of that mod uh, available, um, it would go ahead and download and install everything for you um, so that you're not extracting and deleting and you know uh, dealing with that every time. Um, along that same line of thought is the Download New Mod option. Uh, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. It shouldn't take too long. Basically, we're just just going to give it a download link to the .zip file for the mod we're trying to download and we're going to go ahead and paste that in and select the install mod option. Uh, so as this goes, um, obviously, you know, depending on the mod size, your internet, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, it'll take uh, varying amounts of time, um, but it should show you progress updates along the way. Um, and again, in this case, it's uh, not going to take too long here. So uh, we'll be done pretty shortly here. Um, and this should go ahead. I'll bring the mods folder back up. Um, so once it's done downloading everything, um, it should go ahead and uh, start extracting all those files and placing them into the correct folder. So we're just going to give that a little bit here. Again, depending on your uh, computer, how big the mod and stuff, this part will take a little bit. Um, if it stops responding, that's not necessarily a problem. And here we go. We see our vanilla plus plus um, mod uh, has downloaded and um, is now being placed into our mods folder. So we're just about done here. We should see a pop up saying it was successful shortly.
there we go so everything was success so I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK and it'll kick us back to the main screen and now that we've installed our new mod we can go back to our mod drop down menu and we can select the new mod from the list um, so uh, one thing I would like you to just kind of notice is the news messages uh, as I go ahead and select a new mod you're gonna see that those news messages change um, other things that were changed are going to be the icons, uh, links to website, wikis, discords, all that kind of stuff. Um, so the mod author can still kind of control all this, um, even though it's, uh, you know, you don't need to do anything on your end. Um, and it's going to update itself as you switch between things. So you're going to know right away, you know, based on maybe the news announcement, oh, hey, there's a new mod. And you'll know to, you know, click the check for mod updates button, that kind of thing. Um, the last kind of bit uh, I'll show you is um, maybe you don't have a specific mod you're trying to play or you're looking for like a retail experience, but with a lot more customization and options. Um, Detour Launch can do that for you, too. Um, we will in a minute here get into some of our options and customizations uh, that are part of the program. Uh, but again, for those types of players um, you know we're glad to have you uh, you can go ahead and select the create a mod button um, so that's going to basically uh, explain exactly what I just did what this is for uh, so we're going to go ahead and select the yes option and we're going to see that it has now created a mod for us called my custom mod and selected it um, so it uh, has created all the necessarily folders uh, and files that need to be edited um, so it's just again just kind of done all that for you um, just to save you the hassle and now you have a blank slate that you can feel free to customize and control with any options you'd like um, so we have all of our kind of uh, more basic launch options here uh, whether you want map regen to force new map layouts every game like online uh, the infinite character respec in game by holding alt and uh, clicking an unspent stamp point or forcing specific map layouts uh, maybe you want to cheese lower curse maps for chest patterns or a fast tower entrance that's right next to the waypoint uh, you can also cheese stuff like that um, you know the launcher gives you that control um, moving on from that we're going to go ahead and head into the additional options section um, these are largely quality of life features that um, you might choose to you know enable uh, one of the first ones you're going to see obviously is the change font option um, so this is going to give you live previews within the launcher as you kind of choose between different things um, so if you find something that you would prefer for readability purposes or for theming or whatever um, you can go ahead and just uh, select that and uh, you know hit the use font option um, you guys can feel free to request additional ones if uh, you you know don't find anything in there that you particularly particularly like. Um, moving on from that, we have the auto backup characters option. Uh, at specified intervals, um, you can tell it to back up both your shared stash and your last played character, and it will name those uh, save files with timestamps of when they were saved. Um, so that way you can restore a very specific time from 22 minutes ago or, you know, whatever uh, you have your settings uh, set to. Um, Beyond that, we have the personalized stash tabs option. This one's pretty simple. Uh, your shared tabs in game, uh, you can rename them to whatever you'd like. Um, so if you'd like tab five to be for, you know, all your jewelry and charms, uh, you can kind of just name it that. So it's easy to remember, uh, you know, when you view that in game. Uh, for assassins, if you're a martial arts in and you've been enjoying a mosaic and all that kind of stuff, you might want to enable the assassin charge icons option. Uh, this will put status icons near the bottom of the screen, um, which makes it real easy to track uh, which charge up skills you have active and at what charge level they're at. Uh, along that same line of thought is the Merc Identifier option. Uh, this is going to add a glowing icon above your mercenary, especially useful if they get stuck in large groups or there's lots of effects going around and you're trying to keep them a little safe. Um, there is a mini option if the option with text is a little too much for you. And uh, we'll show all this in game in just a few minutes. 
You can also show or hide item levels. Uh, this will add the uh, item level next to the item name in game. Um, so if you're hunting for specific units and you need a certain, uh, you know, item level or affixes that kind of thing, uh, then you might care to enable that. Uh, rune display. Uh, this will add a glowing particle effect to dropped uh, runes for both mid and high runes. Um, so this again is just a clarity thing, just to make sure you don't run by important things you might want to pick up. And then last on our kind of quality of life option is the hide helmet uh, option. Um, so maybe you have a mask, um, you know, that you like uh, to use, but you just hate how it uh, makes your character look. You can choose the hide helmets option to hide all helmets in the game. Um, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, that stuff making your character look ugly. Um, beyond the quality of life options, there's also some additional customiza customizations uh, that may be available to you. Um, so because we're just kind of creating our own mod, this is all unlocked for us here, um, but we have monster customizations. Um, so you can start controlling things like how many champion packs spawn, uh, how big the group sizes are, your experience rate, um, kind of your drop odds as far as controlling the no drop mechanic where uh, a monster has a chance to drop nothing. You can kind of remove that or make it only, uh, you know, super unique, ignore it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, you can control the density. Um, so this would set it to example four times density for act one, um, but maybe you want even more in act three um, or less, you know, you can kind of control all that as you'd like and then just hit apply when you're ready. And you can do this on a per difficulty basis. And as you can see, uh, you know, they can be separately controlled for each difficulty. Uh, so this is just uh, to further enhance that customization and quality of life control. And we'll try to add more stuff as time evolves, uh, just like, the program has uh, evolved so far. Um, so that's just a, a basic rundown. Let's go ahead and see some of it in action um, so you guys can get a feel for uh, what the, some of those options look like, uh, you know, when they're being used. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Um, so obviously one of the first things you might notice is that our new font has taken effect. Um, so that's great. We'll go ahead and uh, continue looking at some of the other things here. We can see our glowing mercenary icon now above our mercenary. And once more, if that was a little too much for you, that uh, mini option, that uh, other toggleable uh, option in the launcher would just be the triangle. Uh, so it would remove the text and just have that small triangle if you'd prefer that. Um, some of our other things is our hide helmet option. Uh, as you can see here, if we go look at our uh, you know, Barbarian, um, doesn't matter whether I have the helmet on or not, uh, it doesn't display. Um, finally, we have our item levels. Um, looks like I accidentally turned that off. Let's see. Yep, I accidentally set hide. Um, if I would have set and show, uh, whoops, um, then we could have seen that. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and quickly sell, I guess, the Assassin char Charge icon. Sorry, can't talk. So again, this is primarily for you martial arts sins. Um, so we got all our different charge up skills hotkeyed here. And I'm just going to go find some victims and show you how this would work. So as you can see, uh, we still have the glowing orbs. Now that can be a toggleable option to remove those as well if you guys would like. Um, but uh, it will add a status icon near the bottom of the screen so you can see exactly uh, what level, uh, depending on the indicator, and what charges you have active. Um, it will update in real time as you saw. One of them just expired. And if I use a finisher or something, um, then they'll all you know update immediately. Um, so this is just one of those, again, quality of life perks. If you happen to be playing martial arts in um, or want to use that for other things, then uh, you can do that. Um, so with that uh, said, um, I've shown you all the kind of major options. You might notice these extra options below that say extra files needed. Um, there is some additional files that the author would have to provide for their mod um, if they wanted to use some of these features.
features. Um, so for that, I'm just going to switch to one of our in-house mods, Remodded. Um, this is a big overhaul mod that uh, basically this launcher uh, was born for um, and then has been slowly adapted for additional mods uh, as time goes on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select the Remodded UI theme and then I'm going to go ahead and go back into the options and we're going to go ahead and instead of we have an in-game rune word menu, it's currently sorted alphabetically by name, but I'm going to say that I instead want to sort it by the item type, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. We have an advanced monster stats display option. Um, this just lets you choose whether you want a background for those stats or no background, um, or if you you know don't want to see the stats at all. We're going to go ahead and select background. And then finally, uh, we have an additional uh, HUD design um, where you can choose between um, standard and a merged HUD if you prefer your life and mana orbs kind of merged. Um, so we'll just uh, select that just to show it off and some of the other things. And let's go ahead and play uh, Remodded um, and show you just how this will adapt to each mod and let you uh, control things all in one place. As you can see, our our mod remodded is loaded successfully. So just real quick, you know, you can see it's definitely uh, our mod. Um, it's no longer loading the uh, blank kind of customization mod we were using before. So here is our rune word menu option. So you can see everything is by item types, um, you know, with the hover on tooltip um, so that you can quickly cycle through everything and uh, check out what you'd like. But once more, if you didn't like that, if you preferred it alphabetically um, or you preferred it by required levels so you could see what you can use first, uh, all that kind of stuff, you can change that. Um, for our monster display, let's go ahead and just top out to like Bloodmore or something, I guess. And you can see that now um, above the monsters, it not only shows their HP total, but you can see their resistances. Um, and let me try to find a skill um, that lowers your resistances real quick. Sorry, I made a lot of changes, and uh, um, I'm used to our items that uh, lower resistances. And... Uh, Okay, anyways, um, I apologize. Uh, that monster stats to play will update in real time for any monster that's affected by a state. Um, so if I had uh, corruption or whatever on my mercenary, um, you would see all these resistances being dropped and stuff uh, as they were affected by that state. Um, so again, that's just a, another kind of perk of uh, remodded we'll, we'll try to expand that uh, you know out to more mods and stuff in the future um, but that is one of those toggleable options in the launcher right now and then obviously we got our merged HUD display so once more if you're just trying to switch things up a bit um, D2R launch gives you a ton of control uh, as well as making things as easy as possible to, to use um, you know between the different mods and such um, so beyond that it's basically just quick access to all the important stuff again uh, all the links will update depending on which mod you're choosing and things like that. Um, you can have quick sac quick access to all your files. Um, so instead of manually navigating to your save files folder, you can just click the button. It would take you straight to the appropriate um, save files for that. And same thing with your mod files or anything else. It'll just take you straight to the proper place. Um, so uh, again, I thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, I just wanted to showcase why I think uh, both players and mod authors would find this tool both enjoyable and valuable, uh, especially as it evolves over time. Thanks again, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye.